UFC 258 went down last Saturday at the UFC Apex in Las Vegas with Kamara Usman taking on Gilbert Burns in the main event. But before I get into that, there are a couple fights I wanted to talk about. Kelvin Gastelum versus Ian Heinish and Alexa Grasso versus Macy Barber. So, Kelvin Gastelum beat Ian Heinish by unanimous decision 30-27, 29-28, 29-28 on the scorecards. And I think this matchup was great for a few reasons. For one, Kelvin Gastelum was coming, uh, was on a three-fight losing streak. He lost to Israel Adesanya for the interim middleweight belt in what was an amazing fight, 2019 fight of the year. Kelvin put hands and feet on him, but he did come up short in the end. Then he gets submitted in the first round by Jack Hermanson, and I didn't see that coming at all because he's a 10th planet jiu-jitsu black belt. And besides that, I'd pick Gastelum to beat Hermanson nine times out of ten. And then he loses a split decision to Darren Till. So in this fight, I think Ian Heinish was the perfect opponent for him to break his three-fight losing streak against. He's a good fighter, but he's not at the very top of the division, but with a few adjustments he could be. And for Heinish, a win over Gastelum would be his biggest win and catapult him into contender status. So how I see it, both these guys had much to gain from this fight. This fight was good. I really enjoyed the grappling exchanges. In the first round, Heinish got a takedown early, then Gastelum gets up and manages to get a takedown right after, but Heinish, but Heinish grabs his arm and he almost secured a Kimura on him. But Gastelum was able to outgrapple and out-wrestle Heinish for the majority of the fight. And if you're looking on paper, the credentials, Heinish has the superior wrestling credentials, but Gastelum's overall experience really was the difference between them. I also really like the way Kelvin Gastelum moves on his feet. Rafael Cordero is an amazing coach. We've seen massive improvements in striking from guys like Fabricio Verdum and Jacare Souza. These are uh, guys who come from jiu-jitsu backgrounds and they became elite strikers thanks to Coach Cordero. And um, Gastelum has also improved leaps and bounds because of Rafael Cordero. His straight left hand, it, it comes very fast and it's like no telegraphing with it. Also, he has a flu uh, fluidity in his movements that seem effortless. He looks very relaxed the way he mixes his strikes out there. Like he'll throw inside leg kicks, outside leg kicks, body kicks, high kicks. Also, his boxing is really good. Many MMA guys don't really have that smooth slippering, uh, slipping and countering and with combinations the way Kelvin Gastelum is able to do it. But my favorite part of this fight is still the grappling exchanges. I feel like I haven't seen good back and forth grappling in a while. Good win by Kelvin over a tough dude. But I think Kelvin should drop back down to uh, to welterweight. He's small for the middleweight division, and I don't believe he can become champion if he has to face these bigger guys like Darren Till and Israel Adesanya. Both guys already beat him, you know, within the past two years. He's only 5'9", and he has a thick build, but he's not, like, shredded with muscle. He has a little bit of body fat he can lose, so if maybe he drops, like, 10 pounds to walk around lighter when he's not, you know, in fight camp, then he can return to welterweight easier. You know, his weight cut wouldn't be as hard. He's good at 185 still, but those larger dudes like Adesanya are always going to pose a problem, whereas at 170, there isn't anyone who outsizes him so much that he can, um, that he's able to strike and clinch with these guys no problem because they have similar size. Next fight in the co-main event, Alexa Grasso beat Macy Barber by unanimous decision, 29-28 on all scorecards. Uh, Alexa Grasso fought a great fight. She was very composed and was outboxing Macy Barber for the first two rounds. And what surprised me was she was even controlling in the clinch more than I thought she could be considering Macy is the visibly larger girl. For the first two rounds, uh, Alexa was really outclassing her in pretty much every aspect and Macy would get really aggressive and throw a lot of strikes, but whenever she threw something, Alexa would throw it right back. When they went to the ground, uh, Macy landed on top of Alexa, but uh, she reversed it and managed to take her back and she almost submitted her. And in the second round, Alexa landed this real nice combination that hurt Macy. Uh, it was a right hand to the body, then a left hook upstairs, and, you know, she was stunned. But the third round was all Macy. She did what she really should have been doing from the beginning, which is making it a dog fight. Like she came out really aggressive and she put a lot of pressure on Alexa. She kept her on the back foot and really walked her down the whole last round. And I think she got like two takedowns as well. Skill wise though, she's not on Alexa's level, but she's bigger. So she was able to bully her that last round, but it was too little too late. Uh, Alexa already won the first two rounds and that's what won her the fight. 
what I'm wondering is what's next for Barber. Uh, Dana White is pretty high on her, and I think her grit and her, um, how she pressed the action in the third round desperately to win shows that her mindset is in the right place. She was really trying to win the fight till the end, but this is her second consecutive loss, and there was so much hype around her when she first arrived in the UFC. I have never seen a female fighter come into the UFC with this kind of hype. Her first three fights, she won by TKO. And you don't see women finishing their opponents like that, especially not three consecutive matches with uh, stoppage strikes. Women's fights, they typically they, they go to uh, they typically go uh, blah, blah, they typically go to decisions. So here's this young 20 year old girl steamrolling women in her division. So I understand the hype. Also, Macy was doing a lot of talking. She was talking about um, becoming the youngest UFC champion ever, and the UFC was really promoting her, as they should if they want to build new stars. And she was also beefing with Paige Van Zanter. Her name was constantly out there. Then last year, she loses to Roxanne Mataferi, who I believe was the underdog in that fight, but Roxanne dominated her, and she ended up uh, Macy ended up injuring her knee. And like after the fight, she was low key blaming the injury on her loss. But before she got hurt, she was losing the fight. And it's easy to overlook Roxanne because because um, her record isn't the best. Um, at the time, she was 23 and 16. So you're thinking that this hungry young lioness is going to beat the old broad, but she still has five times as many fights that Macy had at the time. And even with 16 losses, each loss is still experience gained. And um, she showed experience in that fight. And now Macy loses to Alexa Grasso, which really isn't a big deal because Alexa is very good and Macy's still only 22 years old. So she has a lot of room for improvement, but the hype around her, and I, I guess you could say her profile, is going to take a hit from this. People are already saying she's just a hype job, which I think it's too early to tell. Give it a couple years before you start you know, giving up on the girl so easily. As for Alexa Grasso, I think the UFC should start promoting her a little bit more. I think she can be marketable because one, she's Mexican, and that's a significant portion of the fan base. The uh, Latino market for MMA and combat sports in general is huge. Also, she's cute. And unfortunately, that seems to be a prerequis uh, pre prerequisite for a female fighter to reach stardom. It's not fair, but it is what it is. And now for the main event of the evening, Kamara Usman beat Gilbert Burns by third round TKO, and this fight was a great fight. Burns started really strong in the first round. 30 seconds into the fight, he dropped Kamara with the overhand right, and he was landing that right hand over and over. And Kamara was wobbled, but he has a like really big head, so you know it's not gonna uh, it's gonna take a lot more than regular punches to put him away. But starting in the second round. Kamaru uh, uh, started to turn it around. His jab was looking good and he was landing solid jabs and he was throwing it from orthodox and southpaw. And at one point, he landed a jab. Then when Burns tried to throw, uh, like return his own jab, Kamaru pulled back and he dropped Burns with a straight right hand. That's when the tide really changed. Once Kamaru found a home for that jab, it was uh, really all over. Burns was hurt in the second round, but he got finished early in the third. And it was a jab from southpaw that started the finishing sequence. Burns was throwing some leg kicks and then he went for another leg kick and at that moment Kamaru switched to southpaw and dropped him with a right jab and then he landed some ground and pound and Herb Dean had to step in to stop the fight. One thing I was excited to see was what improvements Kamaru made since training with Trevor Whitman and it's amazing how Trevor Whitman improves his guys. I don't know what's it uh, what's it about his coaching style that makes his guys look better so quickly, but it works. Rose Namajunas started training with him, and she was a whole different fighter. She managed to outstrike a Muay Thai champion, Joanna Janjacek. Justin Gaethje, you know, he was a knockout artist, but he was a brawler, and he would take one to give one. Then he starts training with Trevor Whitman, and he becomes super technical, and now he's slipping punches while still knocking guys out. Now with Kamaru Usman, he's switching stances uh, and um, throwing more kicks and jabbing better than we've ever seen before. So credit to Coach Trevor Whitman. Whatever he's doing with these guys is really working. With this fight, Usman broke the welterweight uh, win streak record with 13 straight wins. And I think the Nigerian nightmare will really become a night uh, nightmare for the welterweights if he keeps this up. And some people are talking about maybe GSP coming back to face him, which isn't going to happen. Nor would uh, nor would I, uh, would I want it to uh, would want to see it because I think at this point Kamara would beat him. But GSP isn't in his prime anymore, so the win wouldn't even mean that much. And there are other guys in line for the title that are currently fighting; they're not retired. No one deserves a title shot more than Leon Edwards, but they might skip him in favor of Jorge Masvidal, which is a stupid thing, but it's not surprising at all. 
Also, there's the Colby Covington rematch, which I would hope this time around Usman puts that fool to sleep completely. And there's also Steven Thompson, who's on a win streak. So some good fights at welterweight. There's no need to bring GSP out of retirement for a fight that doesn't mean anything for the division. Kamaru's next opponent really should be Leon Edwards. And I think that Gilbert Burns should either fight Covington or Steven Thompson. And maybe that winner fights the winner of Edwards versus Usman for the belt. As for Jorge Masvidal, maybe he should fight someone else in the top 10. I don't know what they should do with him, but he really doesn't deserve another title shot right after getting 50 45 It was a boring fight, but Usman did win every single round. Anyway, guys, that's all I had to say about that. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.